Hi, everybody. I'm Erica Irish Brown. And as Paula said, I'm Chief Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Officer and Global Head of Talent here at City. Really, really excited to be hosting one of my first conversations with our senior leaders. And today we have Mark Mason, our Chief Financial Officer, who I know you're going to enjoy hearing about his experiences. You've learned a lot from our panel, I'm sure. Uh, the type of talent he has on his team. You can see the type of organization he's leading, and now you have the chance to hear it firsthand. So we're going to get right to it since time is short. Mark, welcome. Thank, Thank you. you for doing this. Thank this you. is so exciting to be on stage here with you. And um, I think before we jump into what's going on in city finance, we should talk about you. Okay. I think there are a lot of people that are on this Zoom that probably really want to understand what your career path was. Did you know that you were always going to be a CFO? Was that the goal or how did you plot your career path? Right, sure. So look, Erica, before we get started, let me just say a couple of things. I, I had the chance to get down here early and listen to the, um, to the panelists. Mm -hmm. And I was really, 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 really pleased with what I saw. And um, one, it's, it's great that we've been able to pull together so many people and have so many people sign up for this event. Mm -hmm. I'm told there are over 1,100 people that have signed up. I think that's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And I think the panelists did a great job at really representing what the finance organization's about, but almost more importantly, representing what city's about yeah. and the diversity that we have at the organization and our priorities. Before we jump in, I do want to thank two people in particular and the broader team that put this together. Um, and one person is, uh, is Brian Bajil. Yes. And um, the quick story here is that Brian and I were talking a number of months ago, and I asked for some help. I said, Brian, you know, I want to figure out how to reach more people inside and outside of the organization. I want to put a dent in this diversity objective that I have, that we have as a management team. And Brian worked with Nana and the entire organization team that came together, HR, yep. the Black Affinity Group, and pulled this together. And, and, and that's what the city spirit's really about. It's about that team dynamic. We're helping each other win. Yeah. And so thank you to Brian, thank you to Nana, thank you to, thank you to Paula who introduced us. Uh, we're really excited to be here. So, and, and lastly, I'm excited to be here with you. Uh, we've known each other for, I, we started on the street roughly yes. the same yeah, time. The same so time. long, long, long time ago. And I'm excited to have you to be part of the city family. Oh, thank uh, you. And so welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm, I'm happy to be here with you. So your question, you. um, my journey, and, and I call it a journey because that's what it feels like it's been. Um, I did not start off with uh, CFO as a goal. Okay. Um, you know, I went to, I went to Howard. Uh, so for those of you who are listening or <laughs> HU alum, HU. Um, and um, I went in as a physician's assistant major. So okay. I thought I was going to be a doctor, um, but reality hit uh, very early on, I, I reflected on elementary school where I carried a Samsonite briefcase with baseball stickers on the cover, on the back of it and potato chips and bubble gum inside and I sold that stuff at lunch. Uh, and so I always had, I think, a little bit of a knack for, uh, for business. Um, but, but fast forward, I studied finance at, at Howard. Um, I joined uh, Goldman Sachs, your predecessor firm, uh, when I came out of undergrad. Um, and ultimately went to, to business school at, at Harvard Business School mm -hmm. and did the pivot that a lot of people did at that time. I went to strategy consulting when I came out of business school and, and really worked with a number of different companies across different industries on developing strategies that, that, that could drive shareholder value. Right. Um, and then I, I kind of pursued a fear of mine, which was technology, and went and joined Lucent for a couple years um, and then joined Citi. So that was 20 years ago. Uh, when I joined the firm. And interestingly enough, I joined um, a strategy group mm -hmm. that was focused on cross-selling. Um, and so this is three years after the merger. Um, we uh, wanted to understand how effective we had, we had been in capturing those synergies. Um, and from there, I had a host of different roles at the firm, some in finance and some in the business. And, and really, it's that, that combination, I think, of experiences that helped to prepare me for a role like this. Uh, the ability to, to develop the technical skills that the finance function requires, but also to, um, to hone business acumen skills that I think makes for a better leader all around. Mm -hmm. um, and so 
Um, the journey was not a straight path. Right. It was not one that was predetermined, uh, but it's one that I'm very excited about um, and, and very pleased when I see members of my team, like the panelists that were on here, uh, talk about the future of this organization and of this company. Right. You know, actually, I'm going to go a little off script okay. because you talked about the mobility that you yeah. had, the different roles and how you navigated. And we do have some of our current city colleagues yes. on this Zoom as well. Are there any tips you can give people on how to find those next opportunities and how yeah. to navigate the system? It's, it, it's a great question. And um, there, there are a number of things <laughs> that, I, that I reflect on when I think about my journey here. Um, one is that from the first day, um, I've always thought city. And what I mean by that is when you study the history of this organization that's 200 plus years old, you'll know that it's kind of come <clears throat> together through acquisitions and mergers over time. And, okay. and it's so easy for people to associate themselves with a, in a siloed way. Um, and so one thing that I think has been beneficial in, in my journey here has been always taking a step back and thinking about the firm, thinking about things from a city perspective. We've only got one shareholder. They can't own a stock of Citibank or Solomon Brothers. They right. own a city share. <clears throat> and so one piece of advice would be that. Um, in terms of navigating, uh, no one does any of this by themselves. Right? Uh, and so I, I, I gained a lot from mentor relationships. Mm -hmm. I gained a lot from, from identifying advocates, people who, who are in the room right. and know me well in terms of my capabilities. Um, I've gained a lot from uh, investing in other people and other talent. Um, so that would be the second thing. I think the third thing would be um, you know, setting milestones for yourself. Right? Um, I've, I've tried to approach every role as an experiment or an experience. Right? <laughs> and so with the mindset of what do I feel like I'm, I'm missing in the way of my skill development? And therefore, how do I let that inform the next role that I pursue? And how do I be flexible enough to learn as to whether that role is something I like or something I don't like? And so don't let the goal or the mile marker uh, be so wedged in that you can't pivot once you learn something about yourself. So that would be the third thing. And the last thing that I'll say, which I think is very important, um, is uh, I have a desk piece upstairs on my desk, and my wife bought it for me, and it says, um, what would you attempt to do if you knew you could not fail? Hmm. And, and I keep it on my desk, um, and sometimes when you come to my office, it's facing inward, depending on the type of day that I'm having, and sometimes it's facing outward to the person sitting on the other side. And, and I use it to keep me motivated. I use it to inspire me to think big. I use it to inspire me to take risk because that's how you stretch yourself. That's how you learn more. That's how you become a better leader and professional. And all those things have been incredibly, incredibly helpful to me. Mm -hmm. So let me, let me turn the tables a little bit on uh -oh. you, Erica. And um, you know, look, let's, let's let the audience get to know you a little bit better. So tell us a little bit about how you went from an investment banker um, to an expert you know, in diversity, equity, and inclusion, and, and even more broadly, you're the global head of talent for, yeah. for an organization with 200,000 plus employees. Tell us about that journey. Yeah, no, thanks for asking that. Um, and I'm glad that I can share a little bit about myself, uh, not only with the folks that are external to the firm, but to my new city colleagues. Um, you know, we started on the street at the same time. Yeah. And uh, I always had a STEM education in my background. I studied business, economics, finance, um, and always loved the financial markets. Really enjoyed uh, my time in banking, um, whether or not it was public finance, whether or not it was my tenure at the US Treasury as part of the Clinton administration, working for Bob Rubin, one of our former board sure. members at Citi. Um, and, and, and I really loved my time uh, in high yield capital markets. Mm. And capital markets was great. I just felt like I was on the trading floor. I was in the market, but I was a banker. And, and it was a great, a great, great mix, mix yeah. of, of everything institutions like ours do. So I enjoyed it, but I always had a second job. Mm. And it was diversity and inclusion. I mean, when we started on the street, yeah. you know, there yeah. was nobody with a role like yeah. mine. There was no such thing at the time. So the few of us that were women, people of color, people of difference, 
you know, took it on, you know, took on the challenge of trying to create pathways and opportunities for people like themselves, people who did not have the same level of access. And I certainly was one of those people. And especially because I found my way to Wall Street through a very specific internship that focused on bringing more minorities mm. into the public finance business. Right. And that was driven by the client base, people like Mayor David Dinkins yes. at the time, yes. people like Frank Borges, who was the mm. state treasurer of Connecticut, yeah. that were demanding, they were clients of, of, yep. of the, these firms and they were demanding That's right. diversity in the bankers that serve them. So, you know, that was at the core of my own success and my own ability to have an opportunity to get that crack in the door and kick it open and be successful in banking. Right. So along the way, doing all the work and volunteering, diversity recruiting, going down to Howard, everything along the lines that now we consider like best practice is how I built that that muscle. Yeah. And um I realized when I enjoyed, you know, my my second job yeah. more than my first that it was time to make the shift and move full time into uh, diversity, equity, inclusion. And I've never looked back. It's been super rewarding. Um, and, you know, and as I've grown and seen the commitment by firms mm. like ours, you know, the board members, yeah. the senior leadership grow, it's been super encouraging yeah. to, to stay on this path. Yeah. But I think that's phenomenal. And like I said, it's great to have you. Um, you're bringing a fresh perspective, only having been here in a couple of weeks. And um, it's really exciting to think about what we can do as an organization, as a firm. And we really are committed to this, as you know. And so um, you're going to keep pushing us and, and we're going to keep moving forward in that in that regard. Yeah, excellent. OK, so now we're going to talk city finance, right? They've yes. got a taste of city yes. finance. Yes, they met yes. some of our great people. Yeah. But, you know, what's going on in your world? What's going on in my world? Well, you know, <laughs> it's um, it's always a busy time. But um, if we kind of all take a step back, I mean, you know, we've all been working largely remotely for the last 16 months plus. Mm -hmm. Right. And I was looking at some numbers today and my organization is more than 6000 people and about three quarters of my population still working remotely um, and, and doing a great job in terms of managing what we, what we have in front of us. And I, I think about it right now in, in really, you know, three buckets, right? And um, my kids are probably laughing if they're watching because everything is in buckets. In buckets. Yeah. <laughs> three buckets and, and, uh, <laughs> and one is, one is kind of the BAU activity. And so, you know, what I mean, I'll give you an example of that is um, this afternoon, after the market closes, we're going to file our 10Q, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's that time of year, and uh, we just did earnings a, a month or so ago, and, and now we've got to file the Q. The team's been working really, really hard on that. Um, so that BAU activity, we're working on kind of how the quarter's evolving and what we need to do around expense management and what revenues are looking like and what type of capital actions do we want to tweak through the balance of the year. That, that BAU activity, very important that we continue to get that right. Mm -hmm. um, there's also this transformation bucket, right? And yeah. we've talked, if you've listened to anything that I would imagine the panelists talked about, at least the part that I heard, they talked about the consent orders that we're mm -hmm. facing as an organization and the transformation <laughs> that's underway in finance, but also broadly across the firm. Um, and as, as Francisco Tobias said, that's really about modernizing our finance operations. Yeah. And everyone is working on that. Everyone is taking a step back thinking about what the target state for finance operation needs to look like, how we actually automate things and, re and remove some of the manual touch points along the way, make our operations more efficient. Mm -hmm. And then the third bucket that, I, that I'd mention is um, the strategy refresh, right? And so in many ways, unique opportunity for any company, if you think about coming out of this pandemic and moving towards a recovery, it's the best time to, stay, to take a step back yeah and take a look at your strategy, reaffirm where you have some competitive advantages and where you think you can win, and invest in those areas. And that's what we're doing as a company. Mm -hmm. And, and um, my responsibilities in finance include everything from treasury to planning and analysis to taxes to strategy to M&A and a strategy group. Right with my CFOs are really driving that with the business. And so we've got a lot going on, mm -hmm. uh, but if I had to bucket it, that's how I, that's how I describe it. So you're talking about the transformation, which I think is um, 
I think it's really exciting. I know that it can be, you know, feel heavy, right? Because we have these yeah. consent orders, but right, it's also new opportunity, yeah. right? And the opportunity Absolutely. to be engineer. So a piece of that does involve cultural transformation. Yes. And I've certainly gotten a window into that. Uh, can you elaborate on that work from your perspective? Sure, so um, one, it is very exciting. If you look beyond, you know, the way we're approaching this is, is much more than the consent orders, mm -hmm. right? This is, this is a unique opportunity for a new CEO and frankly, a relatively new executive management team. Yeah. If you look around Jane's table, <coughs> most of that leadership team on average has been in the seat for less than three years. They've been at the firm a whole lot longer, but less than three years. That's a unique opportunity for a new sense of energy around where we take this firm, right? And so we've, we've expanded the way we think about the consent order to that transformation. In doing that, and with a new leader, I think is a unique opportunity to think about your culture, right? And, and, and I think there are a lot of positive things that we have about the city culture coming into this. But with every new leader, there's an opportunity to, to lean in on, on more, some more than others, right? And to double down in some areas. And that's what we're doing. We're, we're doubling down on, you've heard Jane mention, mm -hmm. she wants City to be a place with a soul, a company yeah. with a soul. Uh, you've heard her mention the importance of empathy and, and, and allowing for that to, to drive the diversity agenda that, you have, that we have. Um, you've heard all of us talk about the importance of winning yeah. Right. But not just winning individually, winning together. Right. Um, and, and the last thing is really um, the idea of excellence and a sense of urgency. And, and those are the things that as an executive management team that we're really bringing to the fore. Right. And, and bringing to the fore, what that means is it's the right mix of leveraging the, the existing talent in the organization for which there's, there's great talent that City has. In fact, that's what's allowed us to, to perform, you know, as well as we have over 200 plus years. Mm -hmm. But there's an opportunity to bring in new perspectives and fresh talent as well. And getting that mix right is something that we're focused on. And so culture is, is very important. And I'm glad it's part of the transformation because it says a lot about what's gonna allow us to be that company we wanna be. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm very excited to be a part of that work as well. And I think culture is also something that can enable you to be your authentic self in the yes. workplace, right? And yes. know that you can thrive. Yes. And, um, you know, I was super proud just to know you, Mark, when you published your blog, um, you know, when George Floyd was murdered yeah. and you were your authentic self and you published your blog, I Can't Breathe. I, I would just love for you to share with this group, you know, what prompted you to write it and, and how was it received, yeah. you know, and, and internally, externally? Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, um, I'm, not, I'm not sure where you were, Erica, when you first saw um, that video. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I was, I was at home, as, as I think a lot of the world was. Um, and I was in my office at home with my wife and, and my two children, I have an 18-year-old daughter and a 15-year-old son. And it was the first time that I saw it on the TV. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it shakes you to your core, right? And, you know, for many of us, you know, for black folks, right, it's not, unfortunately, it's not something that's foreign, right? right? But there was something about seeing it on that screen, the whole world seeing it on that screen, um, just how horrific it was. And, and to go through a range of emotions, right? Um, all negative, right, right, by the way, right. right? But everything from how horrific it is what a, to that could have been me or a loved one, right? To what are we supposed to do now? Right. Um, and it's, it's that last emotion, if you will, that that sparked the conversation amongst my family. Um, and, uh, you know, my wife, you know, my wife, Cookie, and, and she's she's an action yeah. oriented person. Uh, you know, but we all talked about it and everybody felt like each person needed to do something. And my, my son said to me, um, you know, well, Dad, you're you're the CFO. You know, we don't listen to you, but if you say something, people may actually care what you think. 
care yeah. what you think. Yeah. Um, and so that was, that was an important kind of um, inspiration, if you will, to, to putting that piece together. Mm -hmm. um, it was obvious that employees were you know, hungry to hear something. Uh, and a couple of employees reached out and kind of said, what are we going to do as a firm? Um, and so that was the inspiration behind it. But it, it, it hurt, right? I, I, the one thing I guess I'm, I'm, I'm happy about is that, um, you know, I didn't have to worry about, I didn't have to think about what that would mean at City, right? right? To your point around being able to be your authentic self, right? Um, you know, I remember calling the then CEO Mike Corbett, um, and the only fight we had over this topic was who was going to put their message out first, mm -hmm. right? Because he was compelled to speak on it, right? right? And, and that's a good place to be when you need to talk about a topic like this. Now, the reaction um, from employees uh, was frankly overwhelming. Um, uh, you know, we have people from employees all over the world actually sent me notes and messages um, about it. Uh, and the thing that struck me what, was it, the messages and notes were more about how it impacted them, right? And how it, in some ways, empowered them to speak out on issues, but also allowed for them to be introspective, um, um, uh, you know, fostered a sense of responsibility in terms of what they can do mm -hmm. to help kind of address the issue broadly. Um, and I think in many ways it spurred a lot of companies around the world to think about the importance of trying to change the world we live in. Yeah. And, and there have been a whole host of initiatives, including what we've done here at City, that have come on the heels of that. Um, and so it's um, a heavy topic, but um, City, um, I think it's important that as a company that we use our voice, that we use our platform, as, as my family refers to it. How are you gonna use your platform? Yeah. That we use our platform on important issues like this, whether it's gun control or racial equity, and they're going to be people who have different views. Yeah. And that's okay. We should, we should be able to hear those views and talk through those views. But, but city has to be able to um, articulate uh, what we stand for and what we believe in as a firm. To whom much is given, much is required. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So um, let's pivot back to you, Eric. Right. So you you recently joined the firm. Um, this we've got 1,100 people that have signed up. Say a little bit about why you chose City. Sure. I, you know, I think you gave a great picture of the senior leadership team, Jane's leadership. You know, everybody seeing your leadership. So. I thought it was a unique opportunity to work for an extremely diverse executive management team. I was really excited about that. That's you know something that drew me in to want to have the conversations. And the more I learned, the more interested right. I was in the role. Um, certainly to be able to lead diversity, equity, inclusion, as well as talent globally right. for the firm, right. I thought was really, really powerful and would enable us to place a diversity lens on everything we do from a talent perspective, right? How we identify talent and groom it and put people on succession plans and, and think about talent over the long term globally uh, and get to know our talent, mm -hmm. right? Um, and uh, it just, for me, was a super exciting opportunity to stretch and grow myself and to integrate, you know, you talk about BAU, right? I want diversity, equity, inclusion integrated in that's right. everything that's BAU that's right. for HR, you know, and especially our talent and leadership processes. So I was really um, excited about that. And I just felt like, you know, even just talking about George Floyd, right? It was a point in time that there was a lot of resetting going on. Yeah. And diversity, equity, inclusion, and sort of the future of a lot of firms when it came to our people, the commitments we made, who we were going to hire. You know, it was, a, it was a time to reset, refocus, and really forge ahead yeah. with senior leadership commitment, board level commitment, and the depth and breadth of the city platform. You know, I mean, we are so global and big. If we are able to, you know, impact inside the walls of city, we could also have a ripple effect and impact the industry right. greatly and, and, and the world, frankly. That's right. 
And, you know, I'm an optimist, Mark. Yeah, you know that. I love and, it. Um, and I just felt like if anyone could do that, you know, it could be this leadership team, uh, my subject matter expertise, right. and an institution as global as City. Yeah. No, I think, look, I, I got to tell you that um, both Jane and I got emails from internal folks, external folks, competitors about you joining the firm. <laughs> Um, and, and so, you know, as if we didn't know already, we were, we were convinced that we made the right decision. And, you know, we were talking before this all started, you know, next week we'll be sitting yes. down going through talent, yes. right? And, and uh, in every talent discussion, you're in the room wearing that lens around not just talent, but how do you actually make sure diversity is synonymous with with those discussions, with that word, right? Mm -hmm. And as you know, we'll be at the executive management team next week as well, yeah. talking about where are we against, you know, diversity goals and things of that sort. So um, I think it's I think it's um, it's obviously a great and important topic and uh, unique time for us to make that impact. So thank you. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate. It. I you know it's funny. I, you know I feel included you know, with, with leadership. And I really appreciate the ability uh, to have an impact sort of right coming through yeah, the door. Yeah. You know, so thank you Good for stuff. that. All right. So to close this out, um, you know, we've talked a lot about what the finance, in, you know, organization is doing, the transformation, but ultimately you have a vision, yeah. right? You yeah. know, you're a visionary leader. You have a vision. Can you share what that vision is for the finance organization. Yeah, yeah. so look, it, it's, it's, not, it's not an overly complicated vision um, in the sense that I, I wanna build a best in class finance organization operations, right? And so, so what does that mean? You know, it, the, uh, you know, in terms of foundational, what that means is ensuring that we can deliver you know, timely and materially accurate reporting, management and regulatory, that's a foundational element of mm -hmm. that. But in order to be able to do that, you really have to bring in and have the best in class talent, the best systems and operations around that. And that comes down to the people. It comes back down to, to that culture. And why do I want that? I want that because um, what we really want to be able to do is be a strategic partner and advisor to the firm, mm -hmm. right? And, and so once those foundational elements are where they need to be, that arms us, that equips us as finance professionals to help guide the direction of the business, right? And, and that's really where I think we can make the most impact. And so my, my vision is, is that, to build that best-in-class finance organization that, is, um, that sits on those strong foundational components and acts as a partner to the franchise, to the firm, right? And, you know, that's everything from how do we ensure we're digitally enabled and that we're future proofed and that we've got the right transformation operations in place. But that that's what's at its core. And, and that's one of the reasons why um, I'm so happy to be doing this. Right. Because I know I've got um, great talent in the organization already, but I know there's a lot of great talent that's out there. And I want those folks here in my finance organization and equally important, um, I want them at the firm. Right. And so even if they're not joining finance, right. I want them joining city, right? Because again, that's the first hat I wear is the city hat, so. Yeah, well, that's a great place to uh, jump into Q&A. And hopefully everybody heard that plug that we want you here at city. So if you're already here at city, we want you to be here and grow. If you're not at city, we hope that this conversation and our panel uh, has encouraged you to think about whether or not uh, there's opportunities for you here at City as well. So let's take some questions. Okay. Okay. Mark, what's the biggest misconception people have about working in finance? The big, biggest misconception um, is that all we do is count numbers or we're being counters. Mm -hmm. uh, and and. It kind of speaks to my earlier point. I think um, what I used to say to people is that we have to get the numbers right, right, in order to be credible in advising the business. Mm -hmm. But I've got people in this organization um, who have exceptional business acumen, 
and who are incredibly capable strategic thinkers. And so that would be a misconception. Yeah, I think that's a great point. I would say that applies to all corporate functions, yes, right? I say yes, that that's to right. all, you know, all of my HR colleagues, you know, in order to be a strategic advisor from a human capital's perspective, you need to have that business acumen. That's so right. it all comes down to knowing the business and partnering with the that's business. Right. Uh, when you look back at your career development, what advice would you have given yourself when you started to move into more senior roles? I think it would be something I alluded to earlier, which is um, you know to take more risk mm -hmm. um, would be would be one of those things. And then the other thing, I guess, there'd be two things, which is um, you know it's all about the people. It's all about ensuring that you've got the right team members around you to ensure you can deliver. And so those are two things that I think you know I would, as I reflect, you know, need to be at the fore. Yeah, that's great. Okay, how can highly qualified candidates communicate that they can do the work and add value, even when they don't have the exact experience your team is looking for? Great question. Yeah, so look, I think, um, I think there are a couple things. One, I think you know, needs are evolving in many organizations, right? If you think about um, technology, you think about mm -hmm. digitization, um, you know, the younger generation in particular, they're bringing skills that the older generation, we just don't have. Um, and so don't undersell, don't underestimate your ability to add value in today's environment. So that would be a gating item. The second would be, um, I often tell people, you know, if you have a good understanding of your strengths, use that to leverage and create opportunities to do things that you want to do, right. right? And so one way is to, you know, you're hired to do a certain job, you do that job really well and you ask to take on something that is perhaps in an area of interest. And so always trying to balance that, I think, is useful. Excellent. Uh, can you comment on how your team has performed during this work from home period? And are there any positive outcomes from this scenario that City would want to retain? Great question. So I think that, first of all, I think the firm has performed exceptionally well. Yeah. Um, and I think about uh, a Sunday in March, I think it was, um, when uh, we basically had as many as people as we could, as many people as we could around the world, try to log on, <laughs> right? We wanted to test the capacity of the system, um, and, and it worked. And, and, and from that point on, we were able to really serve our clients, what have you. I think my team's performed exceptionally well, and I think that you know, we've, closed, we've closed you know, the books multiple quarters now remotely. Um, we've done numerous earnings calls remotely. Um, we've managed, uh, you know, through this franchise or through this crisis, excuse me, while clients have drawn down on lines, while, um, you know, while we've seen liquidity needs of clients have to be met in the capital markets. And so we, we play a role in that as a finance organization. I think we've done exceptionally well. Um, I, one lesson that I think we've all learned that uh, we'll have to figure out how it applies going forward is um, often I've heard across the firm that we have to be close to the business, right? So we think about location right. strategy. Right. Everyone says we have to be close to the business. Well, one thing that we've learned as an organization and, and companies have learned around the world is that, ah, maybe not, right? right. Um, because the business has been remote for over a year. And so I think one of the things that we're all gonna be rethinking is, you know, what the go-to-work model looks like in the future. Right. You know, what type of hybrid model is it? Now, I do believe that uh, we're better together, yeah. right? And so um, I want people in the office, but we've got to think about the longer term strategy there. Yeah. And I definitely feel great about the concept of hybrid, which, yes. which enables flexibility. That's right. Right. But enables those key points of connectivity. Yeah. You know, apprenticeship. Yeah building on culture, yeah. you know, so. Um, and it yeah. seems like the employee, if that resonates, that perspective resonates broadly. Like yeah. I think really people really appreciate the flexibility, yeah. right, so. Yeah, yeah. Do I get to ask, I mean, are all these questions for me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's the best way to rebound from a mistake you've made at work? Um, the first thing is to accept responsibility for the mistake. So important, oh, right? Okay. I mean, mm -hmm. I've seen people, you know, <clears throat> simply fired for not accepting responsibility. And so people want managers, leaders who can be accountable mm -hmm. and who accept responsibility when something goes wrong. Um, 
The second thing I would, I would think is, is try to be part of the solution once you've, once you've identified the mistake, right? right. Don't, don't just bring the manager the problem and say, hey, yes, yeah, my fault, but what are our options? What are the alternatives for how we, how we get this fixed? And then don't, um, don't be so embarrassed to, to not bring in help. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and, and so, you know, escalating quickly, accepting responsibility. I think those are all important, important ways to manage those types of situations. We're all going to make mistakes. We're all human. Right. Um, and if you, you know, people say you got to fail forward. And so, you, you know, you, you've got to if you're going to take risk. Right. You're going to come in short some time and you've got to just be able to manage through that. Right? Yeah, I, 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 I would just add also that you know, when you make mistakes, you usually learn something. That's right. Right. And if you can apply that learning and yeah. show that you're somebody that yeah. can apply yeah. learning Great from point. mistakes and move forward Great point. and shake it off that's and keep, right. you know, keep focused on the forward, yeah. that that's actually yeah. a good no, trait a great, to have. That's a great point. I should have asked you the question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Many companies are laser focused on attracting diverse talent. What differentiates Citi from the rest of the financial services firms? Is that a question for you? Or? Uh, I'll take that on. <laughs> okay, I'll take that on because um, I definitely feel like our focus on attracting uh, diverse talent is, is really part of why I'm here. Um, what I would say is that our leadership team, like I was sharing, is differentiated in terms of the diversity mm -hmm. of our leadership team. I would say our global footprint is differentiated um, from other firms. I think um, you know we have areas of growth that are exciting, like wealth management, that you know create opportunities for people, um, you know, to grow with the firm. Um, and I think that the practice that we're building out for diversity, equity, inclusion, and global talent is one that uh, will focus on how we engage with diverse communities globally, how we develop our talent and create uh, opportunities for mobility and opportunities to be developed and grow at, within the firm and, and, and to engage each other and not just within our own groups or our own silos. My, my vision is that we break down those silos, right? And that we're right. able to you know, come together across dimensions of diversity, acknowledge intersectionality, and, and think about how we you know, create a culture that is you know, inclusive, that everyone can, can succeed and is viewed as, as you know, top talent is top talent, you know, not diverse top talent and right. other top talent. Um, so I'm just really excited for the future and the commitment of the EMT um, is phenomenal. Yeah. And I feel like I can be successful in trying to drive the strategies that we have for diversity, equity, inclusion at the firm as a result. Yeah. I'd add one thing to that, right? Which is, um, you know, we've set a goal for ourselves. Yeah. Right. And we've been very public about that goal. Mm. And in fact, you and I were on a call together <laughs> yes. right, before we came down here around how we're progressing against the goal that we've set and what new strategies we need to put and put it put to work yeah. in order to make progress there. And so um, the commitment is real. Right? Yeah, so. that, that's a great point. That which gets measured gets done. That's right. right? And so it's not about just talking the talk. It is about walking the walk. And um, not goals just for goals sake, but to really work towards something that we know is right and we know that the town exists, right? There's just no question. All right, so I just wanna thank you. I wanna thank you for enabling me to have this conversation with you. Um, I, and I've known you a long time and I learned <laughs> a lot too. So um, it was really great to hear your yeah. experiences and uh, learn more about the city finance organization because I am definitely learning uh, myself. So uh, I'm excited to be here and um, just want to make sure you get a chance to really bring us well, home and wrap things up. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and and um, I want to thank you, too. Right. I mean, as you said, it, it's been fun and I'm honored <laughs> that um, your first debut, so to speak, <laughs> while at the firm is here with me. Yes. Uh, and so excited to do that. Uh, and look, I'm, I'm excited. Um, to be at this firm. I've been at this firm for 20 years, and I think that we're in a unique place despite being a 200 plus year old firm. And that unique place is a place where we have an opportunity to, to reinvent city. Uh, and that's in fact what we're doing, mm -hmm. right? And there's a lot of passion, a lot of energy around that 
Um, hopefully you all have seen that here with Erica and, and with me and, and the entire leadership team brings that um, to work every day. Uh, and, the, and the career opportunities here I think are endless. Um, Francisco mentioned he had been in eight roles since he joined back in 2003. I've been in and out of businesses. I've been the CEO of businesses. I've been the CFO of businesses. And to your point, the globality, you know, just creates a world of opportunity for people um, as it relates to careers. And, and I, I also want to speak to the internal colleagues who are listening in as well, um, because that mobility is available to all of you, to all of us. And, um, you know, in that vein, uh, I will tell you that for those listening in, we're going to send you an email. Uh, with some links and an easy way to upload your information and upload your resume. And we want to stay in touch with you all. Um, we want you to come to our site and look at career opportunities. There may not, they may or may not be a fit right now, but either way, we think it's important to develop a relationship. Um, and for those of you that work at City, you know how to, how to find out about those career opportunities. And, and now's a unique time uh, to explore those things. Um, there's a saying that a, pr a prior CFO said to me, which is that careers are defined in times of crisis. And in many ways, this reinvention of the firm is that unique opportunity to redefine your career, uh, whether you're at the firm already or considering joining City. So with that, I want to thank everyone. I want to thank you all for joining. I want to thank my colleagues for making the time and participating. I want to again thank Brian and Nana for their leadership in pulling this together. And I want to thank Erica for co-hosting this with me. So thank you all very much. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone.